everyone in this video we are going to talk about buoyancy now we know that matter exists in three major forms that is solids liquids and gases now liquids and gases have a special property that is they can flow from one place to another easily and that is the reason why we categorize them under a special category which we call fluids so liquids and gases are considered to be fluids since they can flow easily from one place to another now solids have not got that property so we do not include solids in this category now solids exert pressure due to their weight and liquids on the other hand exert pressure due to the movement of their particles now since in fluids or liquids or gases the particles are more or less free to wander from one place to another they can move here and there very easily and that is the reason why the pressure that they exert is due to the movement of their particles and also it is due to the weight of the fluid but on the other hand the solids can exert pressure only due to their weight now this is because the particles that the solid is comprised of are not free to wander here and there their positions are fixed and that is the reason why there is no pressure exerted by the solid uh, solids due to the movement of the particles because there is no movement of particles at all now let's say we have a block or an object on a table and this block has some weight isn't it the weight is due to the gravitational pull of the earth which is directed in the downward direction so this object must be exerting pressure in the downward direction on the table so from here we can conclude that the pressure that a solid exerts has a particular direction so this in this case here the pressure is exerted in the downward direction that is the direction of the force let's say we have a container which has water here and i have shown these red things as water molecules now these water molecules in this uh, container are free to move here and there and because of their movement they are able to exert pressure in all the directions possible so in this case here these particles are exerting pressure in all possible directions like this and these particles uh, like these are able to exert pressure to the walls of the container as well because they are located close to the walls of the container like this now these particles exert pressure to the walls of container by bombarding to the wall of the container so here we saw that the pressure due to liquid particles is in all the direction it has got no particular direction as like solids but there is, there is no particular direction but in all possible directions the pressure pressure has been exerted in case of fluids now let's say we have a container which has water in it and we have a plastic bottle empty plastic bottle with the lid on now let's say we want to immerse this bottle inside this water let's do that now when you dip it inside water and then when you release it as soon as you release it the bottle moves upward and then it starts floating in water now what has made this possible we have not exerted any force in the upward direction isn't it we have just applied force in the downward direction to push it downwards inside water but when we release it it moves upwards and then starts floating now that indicates that there must be a force which is exerted by water to push it upwards so this up thrust is in the upward direction and this is the one which we call as the buoyant force now this buoyant force we define it as the tendency of a liquid to exert an upward force on an object placed in it and this is called buoyancy so this property of any liquid or fluid is what we call as buoyancy that is it is this tendency of a fluid because of which an object is pushed upwards with a particular force which we call as buoyant force now this is the main reason why ships float in water and also we are able to swim in water because of the same reason because of the buoyant force that water offers 
Now, this bottle has also got its own gravitational pull, isn't it? Because that is the weight of this bottle, which is in the downward direction like this. But as you can see, this downward force is not enough for it to move in the downward direction because the up thrust that water offers is more as compared to the gravitational pull of bottle. That is the reason why this bottle moves in the upward direction as we know that whenever there is an imbalance or unbalanced force, the object moves in the direction of the greater force, isn't it? This, in this case here, the up thrust is greater than the gravitational pull or the weight of this bottle, which is in the downward direction. So, since up thrust is greater and this up thrust pushes it upwards, this bottle moves upwards. So, whenever the gravitational force or the weight of an object is less than the buoyant force that the fluid offers, the object floats. In this case, the blood bottle starts floating, isn't it? But somehow, if you make the gravitational pull greater than the buoyant force, then the object will sink, isn't it? This amount of buoyant force will no longer be able to push it upward. Since the gravitational pull is more than the up thrust or the buoyant force. Now, how can we do that with the same object that is this bottle? One way to do it is that fill this bottle fully with water. water. Now, let's say we have a water filled plastic bottle with the lid on. And now if we want to immerse it, if we try to immerse it, it sinks to the bottom of the container. Now, how is that possible? As we have discussed before, now we have just increased the gravitational force or the weight of this bottle. So, now the buoyant force is the same that this water has offered to the bottle, but the gravitational pull or the weight of this bottle has increased. And now, since there is even now an unbalance in the forces, the bottle moves in the direction of the greater force that is the weight of the bottle and it sinks to the bottom. So, we conclude that when the gravitational force or the weight of an object is greater than the buoyant force, then the object or the bottle sinks. Now, let us say we have this container with water here. And we want to take out a mug full of water from this container. So, what do we do? We just uh, immerse a mug inside it and then we take it up. We move it upwards. Now, when we do that, the, uh, the mug full of water comes out very easily. It's perfect. Now, when you try to lift it further, it's still easy. Then, when you lift it above the surface of the water, it suddenly becomes difficult for you to lift the bot uh, to lift the mug full of water isn't it now that is also because of the buoyant force that the water offers to the mug so that the mug feels lighter when the mug is inside the water immersed inside water but as soon as you take it up to up from the surface of the water it starts gaining its weight because there is no force upward force to balance its weight but inside water it was there that is the buoyant force was there which was actually balancing out or cancelling out some of its weight that is the reason why we feel that the mug is lighter but outside it feels heavier so whenever an object is immersed in water or any fluid it appears to lose some weight and feels lighter now this is because of this is because the water exerts upward force on it and that is what we called as the buoyant force. It is the same force which is responsible for this observation as well. Now let us do an experiment. Let's say we have a container with water and we have placed this container on this weighing, uh, weighing balance, weighing machine and then we hang an object here with a spring balance so that we can uh, note the weight of both of these things. Now initially, the weight of this block or this object was 100 grams, let's say, 
and the weight of this water full of beaker beaker full of water is 500 grams now when you start immersing it let's say we immerse a portion of this block inside this water now what will happen what happens is this weight or the reading shown by the spring balance reduces and it becomes 90 grams but on the other hand this weight starts increasing it has increased from 500 to 510 grams similarly when you go on immersing half of the portion of this object in water again you find a different reading you may find that 90 grams is turned to be 80 grams and then this weight also increases to 520 grams similarly when you dip in three-fourth of the portion of this object inside water the weight in the spring balance also reduces to 70 grams and the weight shown here increases to 530 grams again when you dip it fully when you immerse it fully then the weight shown by the spring balance is again less that is 60 grams and the weight shown by the wing machine is 540 grams now as we have seen that the weight in the shown in the spring balance goes on decreasing as we go on immersing the immersing uh, bigger portions of the object inside water and this reading goes on increasing now if we lower this object further in the liquid we do not see any increase or decrease at all so the maximum loss in weight of an object takes place when it is fully immersed in a liquid but any further lowering will not yield any result that is there will not be any decrease or increase in the weight of the object once you immerse it fully we do not see any further lowering or, or further increase or decrease in the weight so that is what i wanted to say in this uh, experiment we conclude that the maximum loss in weight of the object takes place when it gets fully immersed in water and that is also because of the buoyant force which cancels out uh, some portion of the weight of this object when it is fully immersed in water the more the more bigger portion that is immersed inside water the more buoyant force it it experiences now i have a question for you that is if the buoyant force depends on weight only on weight of an object then how are heavier objects like ship float on water and lighter objects like iron nails sink we know that ships and iron nails are made up of metals but these heavier objects like ships float on water but the small object which is an iron nail sinks when it is placed on water so we need to find the reason behind this occurrence or this happening so this exercise is being left to you but i will consider this question and answer this question in my videos to come so stay tuned and keep watching and i hope this video was helpful to you thanks for watching tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning